So it's three games to go. Two wins equals promotion. Nothing will be decided this night. However, a big job can be done here at Home Park as Bristol Rovers go up against Plymouth Argyle with kickoff at 7.45. Well, good evening. Welcome to Argyle TV. David Waldridge here. We're just three games left until the end of the season. You can almost taste the championship. Tonight, Bristol Rovers, the visitors here to Home Park. If you can't be here at a sold-out Home Park, you can watch all the action live on Argyle TV. Get your match pass right now by heading over to pafc.co. UK. Now, of course, this is a big game tonight. We're expecting some big moments, so it's only right that I have a big-time expert with me in the form of Mr. Ian Stonebridge. Ian, welcome back to Home Park. Thanks for being here tonight. I mean, it really doesn't get bigger than this, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. You know, all, all of the games come thick and fast, and it feels like each game's bigger than the last, and clearly Argyle have got themselves in a, in a fantastic position across this season. So, you know, that's what's opened up the opportunity in these last few games, and, you know, fingers crossed we can, we can have another performance similar to Saturday and, and a nice positive result. And what a great position to be in here. Just five points needed from the final three games, two of them at home. A, a big, big assist could be done here tonight. It could, definitely. I mean, we say... Only five points needed. It feels, still feels like there's a lot to do, you know. Um, Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich obviously pushing Argyle all the way and, and, you know, they'll keep that pressure on right up, up until the end. So it's, it's vital that Argyle get three points from these home games and, you know, the next, next one's here tonight. So looking forward to it. I mean, what a competitive season it's been. There's three teams in that tussle at the moment. Ourselves, Ipswich, Sheffield Wednesday as well. 92 points was enough to win the league last season. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, it's huge. And, and it's just kind of, a, I think, a evidence of the quality of the league and, and the quality of some of the teams in it. And I think that makes it all the more impressive, really, that Argyle are up there and competing with, with those clubs. And, you know, long may it continue. And I mean, what a team this evening to compete against as well. Bristol Rovers, I believe, the 152nd meeting between these two sides and arguably the most important meeting ever. Yeah, we almost, uh, we count this, I would say, as a, as a bit of a local derby. I realise that Bristol's not that close to Plymouth, but, you know, when you've, when you've <laughs> been on that Argyle coach, uh, you know, for hours and hours heading up north, it certainly uh, feels much closer. So, yeah, there'll, there'll be a lot on this game tonight. There's always a, a good rivalry, I think, amongst uh, Argyle and, and Rovers anyway. So with the, with the additional kind of uh, pressure, if you like, on the game tonight, I'm sure it will be a great occasion. And of course, two home games left, this one tonight and then Burton on Saturday. How useful is it to have two home games so close to each other when the stakes couldn't be higher? 
I think it's it's great to have the, the games close together in the fact that you, you don't have too much time to dwell on you know the pressure, to dwell on the thoughts of what might happen, what could happen. Um, all we've got to do as a player and as the management team is focus on that next game, focus on their jobs and, and hopefully come out and get the job done. Yeah. Well, Ian, we'll be going through those team sheets soon enough. But between now and kickoff, plenty coming up for you here on Argyle TV. We'll hear from Stephen Schumacher, Bally Mumba as well. But first, let's have a look back at that brilliant win from Saturday. Liam Bennett to stand it back up towards the far post. It's going to fall to Harvey Nibs on the edge of the area. Just leant back, put it well over in the end. There was no danger for Burton. Gillespie and Longviker trying to push up where they can. And Gillespie's found Hardy, who shovels it towards Callum Wright. Into the centre, and Argyle are in front! He just about took it off the toes of a defender and was very, very cool to finish. Two excellent touches, two excellent goals in a week. Plymouth Argyle 1, Cambridge United 0. What a fantastic goal. Callum Wright doing more than enough to justify his... his selection from Tim Schumacher so far in the game, let alone before that, that, that goal there. Seddon can look to play it back in, that's a nice delivery to the near post, flipped on, chance at the far post, headed in! Cambridge have levelled. Randall, brilliantly done by Adam Randall, releases Callum right down the right. Hardy's in field, Mayer's in field, Mayer leaves it to Mumba, and he comes to the edge of the box, it's Barley Mumba on his right foot, gets the shot away. Takes a double deflection, there's shouts everywhere for handball. Danny Mayer gets it back from Randall, does Mayer slightly ahead, and it gets there to Callum Wright, banged in towards Danny, uh, towards Brian Hardy. His shot is blocked. Callum Wright on the edge, just gets away from his man, tricks his way into the area, shoots left footed. That's an excellent block by Morrison. It might fall for Joe Edwards, gets it loose. Joe Edwards! It's in! just to see the ball nestle in the net at the end of that. Some really good play from Danny Mayer and, and Callum Wright. Oh, those two creative players doing their jobs. Excellent persistence from both of them to create that chance. In the end, I was just waiting. The ball was near Ryan Hardy. I thought he might take a swing at it. Joe Edwards with the momentum, able to run onto it. Just poke the ball home. Fantastic. Number again. Not many in the area for him to cross to, so he plays in for a 1-2 with Ennis. Gets into the byline, cuts it back. Niall Ennis! 3-1 Argyle! There's another really good goal. Danny Mayer and, and Farley Mumba are almost toying with, with Cambridge out on the left and not really. Each of them waiting for the other to take the, the initiative. Farley Mumba eventually says, right, I'll come and have a go at this. Plays it into Ennis. Lovely bit of interplay, as you say. Just a driving run. Niall Ennis' return pass just really invites him to run onto it. He does great. Retains his composure and gets the ball back and Ennis showing a real desire to get on the end of it and a really comfortable and confident finish from him. Then to take the free kick at his leisure. Up towards Ennis, beyond him. Bennett clears, back in by Randall, long header by Bennett and now Scar's got to chase. He's got a hell of a battle on here, he's got two with him, Dan Scar and the Smiths got there first. Burton comes out and makes a very fine stop. You had to time that perfectly, didn't you? Pilgrim Pete with us. <laughs> As we talk about last Saturday, I mean, what a win it was, Ian. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, fantastic. You know, it's uh, it's really hard, I think, with the amount of pressure that was built up to the mm. game um, to go out there and put on a performance like they did. You know, it, it didn't necessarily create tons and tons of chances, but to, to get ahead in the game and then to recover from the disappointment of, of them equalising, I thought was great. And, you know, they, they played the game and managed the game really well. And, and hopefully we can see some more of that tonight. And that's what you need at the business end of the season, but not just the business end, but also when you're going for that promotion, that character in the side. Definitely. Uh, you know, it's, I don't think it's a surprise because we've seen it from this group of players and, and coaching staff all season, really. So um, the difference perhaps on Saturday between the two teams was just was those moments of quality. You know, Callum Wright's first goal, um, you know, to get us, get us off and running and the combination play between um, Bali Mumba and Niall Ennis for the, for the third was absolutely fantastic. So, you know, they showed their quality in the key moments and that was ultimately what won the game for them. Of course, we want to hear from you tonight as well on Twitter at Argyle, hashtag PAFC. And I mean, hopefully we can hear lots of comments. I'm sure there will be for such a big game the season. And with that, let's not waste any more time, Ian. Let's go through that starting lineup this evening for Argyle. In goal, Callum Burton at three, Macaulay Gillespie, James Wilson as well, Dan Scar, Matt. Butcher, Joe Edwards, Danny Mayer, 
Uh, Noel Ennis, Bally Mumba, Adam Randwell, Randwell, oh, I forget my words, that's so windy here. Uh, Callum Wright as well. And then on the bench for Argyle, Adam Parks, Jordan Houghton, Ryan Hardy, Sam Cosgrove, Finna Azaz, uh, Nigel Lodvik, and Jay Matete as well. I mean, some big players to look at for this evening. I mean, Ennis scored at the weekend, Edwards did as well. Hopefully a repeat this evening as well. Yeah, I mean, in the, in the context of the season, we're used to quite a few changes in Argyle's starting lineup. So three changes from Saturday feels, you know, fairly small in the grand scheme of things. And I think um, you can certainly understand uh, the manager's thoughts in terms of who, who he's brought into the team. Obviously, Matt Butcher coming into the midfield alongside Matt, Adam Randall. They've played plenty of football together this season. And, and Jordan Houghton, who was excellent, I thought, on Saturday, you know, is obviously valuable to, to come on if needed. James Wilson slotting into the back three. So it's a, it's a familiar back three. We've seen that lots of times this season. They'll, they'll, their communication, their understanding of each other is, is going to be top notch. And, and Niall Ennis, you know, starting up top, I thought he was he was excellent when he came on offers something different so clearly Ryan Hardy has the pace to stretch it an opposition defense Niall Ennis is really good at holding the ball up and bringing people into the game and is no small goal threat himself as well so again I think that those changes it's an exciting starting lineup for for Argyle and hopefully they can they can go out there with the confidence that they showed on Saturday and I'm glad you mentioned Ennis there really is a great player almost bringing the attack with him he doesn't just go up there isolated he almost involves everybody in the game at the same time I mean it's easy to see from the past three wins in a row hopefully four this evening with him yeah with the system that Argyle play you know often we've seen one up front so your, your job in that role is is to occupy the back the, the opposition defense but also if the ball comes out and Argyle clear it it's your job really to get hold of it and try and bring others into the game and I think he's a really nice foil tonight Danny Mayer and Callum Wright playing behind him he'll be able to bring them into the game and we'll hopefully see them um, you know have a big attacking threat in, in the game as a result of that so let's have a look at the Bristol Rovers starting lineup this evening as well. In goal, James Belshaw, uh, Lewis Gordon as well, Jarrell Quantsar, Grant Ward, John Marquez, Aaron Collins, Lewis Gibson, uh, Anthony Evans, Lamar Bogard, Luca Hall, Josh Colburn is Coburn, sorry, as well. On the bench, Jed Ward, James Connolly, uh, Sam Finley, Scott Sinclair, Ryan Loft, uh, Harry Anderson, and James Gibbons. Now, in that Bristol side, there's a there's a few names that we might recognise. Scott Sinclair, just one of them in that side. Yeah, he's obviously a really experienced player and had had some time down here at Argyle himself. So, you know, if he does get on the pitch tonight, he'll he'll be a threat. But Clearly, Aaron Collins is, you know, a very prominent player for them this season. And, Incredible. You know, to 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 win the the kind of player of the year in this league, given the quality that's on show right across the teams, is is absolutely a you know a huge achievement for him. And he's dangerous, and so Argyle are definitely going to need to watch him tonight. Well, that's the key word, dangerous. I mean, Aaron Collins, as you said, to win player of the season from a team that arguably aren't going for promotion is quite a standpoint to make as a player. Yeah, I don't want to pick him up too much. He was just over there a minute ago, but he's yeah. <laughs> well, you know, having watched him, he's, he's really he's a sharp striker. He, he's good with both feet. He's got that quality of finish, but he also does create. So you know, it's it's one thing to say, well, you know, if we keep him quiet, that's the job done. I don't think that's necessarily the case. So you know, he he as well as a striker brings other players into the game, and the, you know, Bristol Rovers have got a lot, a lot of goals in their team. So it's something our goal definitely needs to keep an eye on tonight. And this is the thing: Rovers have got a lot of goals. Yes, okay, they're not playing for anything in particular particularly in the league now, but they're still a dangerous side. Yeah, they are. And, you know, professional footballers have pride, despite the fact they're not necessarily um, playing for anything in, a, in the sense of the team. All of these players, to a certain degree, are either playing for contracts at Bristol Rovers. They might be coming to the end of their, of their time there. They might be looking for moves. Again, wanting to make sure the manager sees them as part of this, his squad and team for next season. So regardless of whether the team's got anything to play for, I think, you know, Professional footballers will go out there with, with a certain amount of pride. They won't want Argyle to to make make anything um, of the game tonight. They'll want to make it hard and they'll they'll come here and, and make the most of the atmosphere that they know there's going to be. Yeah. And this is the thing, I know some people will be looking at Rovers' side thinking, look, they haven't won in the last three, but this is a team that managed to draw against us earlier in the season. Derby, Barnsley and Ipswich as well. Those teams that we're all competing against, they'll love to ruin the promotion party. Yeah, they would. Um, you know, ac I think across the season, We've seen that teams can beat anyone else in in the league, and it just just takes you know the tiniest bit of lack of concentration or a few players not not quite um, at the races in terms of their concentration. And any team has the capability of beating anyone else. So you know Argyle, I'm sure, will be focused on their their job, the process, the 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 
plan that they've had throughout this season. They'll have adapted that to, to meet the needs of, of facing Bristol Rovers tonight. And I'm sure that we'll see the, uh, a positive result of that on the pitch tonight. Well, Ian, we'll have more on the way for you. You're watching Argyle TV and you can watch every little bit of the action with full match com commentary with the match pass here on Argyle TV. £10. Head over to pafc.co.uk, click on Argyle TV and all the information will be for you there. As we continue after this. Can you pledge 35 hours for Project 35? Pledge 35 hours for Project 35. Pledge 35 hours for Project 35. Well, as we kick off towards this evening here at Home Park against Bristol Rovers, we are joined by Her Game 2, which is an initiative which supports and aims to tackle any kind of sexual abuse within football and anything that's disallowed that we want to kick out of the game. And we'll be seeing and speaking more about that coming up next. It's my workplace. My safe place. I'm an ally. A place to feel included. We love our it's her game too. For 90 minutes, we come together. To cheer on our team. It's a game I love and was born to play. We are a family. We are one Argyle. So here at Home Park this evening, not only are we welcoming Bristol Rovers, we also are welcoming the brilliant team from her game to helping to tackle sexist abuse within the realms of football. And you guys are going to be teaming up with us as well with the Argyle women's team for the final game of the season. Emma Potter, ladies and gents. Emma, thank you so much for joining us. Now, I have personally have heard about your initiative for quite some time. It's an amazing thing that you are doing. Tell us more about it. Yes, yeah, so the Her Game 2 campaign is um, a campaign at a lot of our football clubs now, but particularly here at um, Plymouth Argyle, to tackle and eradicate sexism, misogyny and harassment um, against women and girls in football, so to make it an inclusive environment for everyone. And this is the thing, I mean, myself, and I'm sure there'll be some viewers as well, that were quite shocked to hear that it's still around that kind of negative energy and that yeah. this is still needed. It, it, it's astounding and it shouldn't be right that we should even be having this conversation, but it's amazing that we are to tackle it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're really lucky here at Plymouth Argyle. We've got an amazing fan base who are really inclusive, um, but unfortunately, we still do have incidents. Um, they're very rare, but they still do happen. Um, a lot of abuse really does happen on social media. Um, so that's where we have to be really mindful that it happens, that people need to have a safe space that they can go and, you know, with, and be able to make comments without fear from abuse and a fear from any sort of harassment. Um, but we want to just really inspire um, women and young girls to be able to, you know, be able to go and work in, in those environments and to be, just be themselves. So talk about some of those examples then. What are the things that you guys have done to really make a difference so far? 
So here at Plymouth Argyle particularly, we have um, obviously looked at things like period poverty. So that is um, something that, you know, it can be really expensive <laughs> um, sanitary wear. So we've put in our toilets. We've um, been made sure that there's free um, sanitary items for all, all women. Um, obviously, our female, our ladies team are now gone on into wearing black shorts um, so that they, they're not embarrassed or worried about um, things like that um, we've made a safe space for um, online for our female fans so that they can actually post in a, a forum where they, they don't have that fear of any repercussions of making a comment and they have any sexist abuse we've got um, a reporting service here um, at Argyle where they can report anything in a anonymous kind of um, system and we also have a team of ambassadors and advocates as well. Well, I mean, just the list, yeah. it seems yeah, endless. No, you guys I mean, there's no. lots of other things as well. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> and I mean, now, your initiatives was started off by a group of 20 or so, was it? I think it was 12. 12? Um, oh, 12 <laughs> um, female fans, and actually from Bristol um, Rovers as well. So, well there we go. So it it's quite, meant to be. Yeah, it's, it's quite poignant that sure. it's, it's today. Um, and that's why we wanted to do this dedicated fixture, to obviously, um, because it was the Bristol Rovers fans. And we've got a really good partnership with the um, Bristol Rovers um, advocates and ambassadors. And we've built up a really nice national network of between those advocates and ambassadors. And it's a really nice, safe environment for all those women and girls. I know you've mentioned some, quite frankly, inspirational stuff that your yeah. initiative has put together. But what barriers are left? What should be done? What needs to be done moving forward? I think the barriers that we still have is that girls still sometimes feel that they can't have that free speech and um, women that feel that they can't actually still go and say what they want about football still have an opinion so we need to be able to be like you know it's okay you can still have an opinion about football it's not just a men's game it's for everybody and also for women that are working in in football and playing in football so we need to stop abuse towards like for example female football players and um, um, females that are working within sport like physios linos all those kind of things because still still get that abuse so we want to be able to be that inspiration and mm. to be able to go and do that so if we inspire any little girls that want to go and work in sport then that's what we want to do and i suppose it's not just from a professional standpoint it's not just from the fans in the stadium standpoint but also a grassroots level as well absolutely to get them included in sport so any little girls that see our, our ladies going out on that football pitch to inspire them to be like actually that's who i want to be so look at the how the lionesses have inspired um, of millions of little girls. Like if we can do that from a local level, that's amazing for us as well. And this is it. You just for me, it seems you're making things so much more accessible mm -hmm. for a whole new generation to interact with football in a completely different way. Yeah, absolutely. So I think like you know the work that not just her game two does but for everybody from the say from the lionesses down from our plymouth argyle um ladies um fo women's football team you know everything that we do it's accessible to make it accessible for all so emma how can people get involved if they've seen now on argyle mm -hmm. tv the amazing work you're doing how can they get involved yeah, reach out to us um obviously through twitter we've got our ambassadors our advocates and um, you can reach out to us on there go on to the her game two um campaign website um, and all our contact details are on there as well just get in touch with us come and speak to us at the football club as well where we're always here on match days you can come and speak to us we're always walking around speak to us and we'll tell you how you can get involved well emma potter continue the amazing work that you are doing and of course tonight a huge game between plymouth argyle and bristol rovers and we'll be hearing from stephen schumacher at the gravitas of this fixture after this So Stephen Schumacher is so close, just three games away from achieving what so little have. Paul Sturrock, for example, Derek Adams, Dave Smith as well, and that's gaining promotion. But it, not only has it been a magnificent season for the whole side, but also for Stephen himself as he won Sky Bet's League One Manager of the Season. And here's what he had to say. I 
it's always good to get recognised for individual awards and whatever, but I would swap them all gladly right now for for a promotion. So that was the, the target at the start of the season. We're three games away from achieving it, and we know that if we play to the standards of what we have done for the majority of the season, then, then we can get the, the points that are required. Now we know going into Tuesday night first against Bristol Rovers is going to be a really tough game. It's Every game is a huge game, but... This one that's in front of us now is is massive and, and we need to make sure that we're prepared as best as we can for it and we put in the same energy and play with the same amount of effort as we did at the weekend, play with the same quality if we can and then try and get that win. Mm. Yeah, you, you mentioned Bristol Rovers, we've played them quite a few times already this season, different competitions, had tight games against them, they had a player we won an award on Sunday as well, you know they're a, they're a real quality outfit aren't they? Very good. Um, on their day, can beat anyone in the division. They're really strong. You say they have the League One player of the season, and Alan Collins, who's got unbelievable numbers this year. He's got so many goals and assists. He's he's been outstanding. But he's not the only one in their team that are performing well. Um, whatever system that they choose to play, we know that they that they're a threat all the time. And I know that they're going to be really motivated to beat us because they won't want us to achieve what we want to achieve. So we've just got to make sure that. We try and play as best as we possibly can because it's going to be a tough game. Yeah, you, you mentioned a, a, a moment ago about just keeping kind of what we've been doing and playing the way we have done throughout the whole season, and that is why we are where we are, isn't it? The consistency that we've shown. We've been in the top two for the majority of the season, and it is just a couple more, <laughs> couple more to go. Yeah, and. I would say we, we pride ourselves every day. We, we talk about it, about standards in training, get that right. Um, if the attitude to, to learn and, and try and get better as a squad is there all the time. So if that bit, bit, bit's right, then you've got a chance again on, on the pitch to, to get some consistent results. We've been, in my opinion, um, really consistent, played really well for the for large part of the season. We've had dips, as every team has, but... We're still there, we're still in the mix. We've got three games to go it's in our own hands. We're slightly ahead of Ipswich, slightly ahead of Sheffield Wednesday and and we know that we're gonna to have to show that consistency, otherwise if we don't and we fall off that, then one of two teams and Barnsley are also really good. So if we don't get the results we need then we'll get punished. So just focus on our on our job if we can. Well, I think one of the key things that Schumacher was mentioning there is standards. And I mean, those standards have been high all season long. We've been in the top two conversation pretty much since October. That's astounding. Yeah, it's a remarkable performance right across the year. And, and to sustain that, as, as we've already mentioned, in the face of a, a lot of pressure from clubs underneath, you know, um, very rarely has there ever been an extended kind of wobble or a, or a series of results that have been disappointing. You know, Argyle, whenever there has been a slight disappointment in this season, they've been able to pick themselves up straight away. And I think that obviously comes through um, and is as a result of the, the atmosphere and the, if you like, the team climate that, that Shuey's created with the group. Yeah. And I mean, you talk about pressure. I mean, we played more games than anyone else. 28 games this season. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and for the club to, to be able to sustain it, you know, January was key in terms of the players they brought in, um, adding to the squad, really extending the the kind of options that the manager had at his disposal. And I think the the results since then have have borne out. They've they've justified um, any expenditure that the club made at that stage, and has really been key in in the club maintaining that that push for promotion. Yeah. Well, I said played at 28. Then I didn't mean that. I mean they've won 28. And I mean that brings me to my next point: consistency. It. it how has we managed to do that? It's just incredible. As a player in the dressing room, you've been in a promotion-winning side. To have consistency like that, does it build confidence to every win? It definitely does. And there's also that expectation and I think the the relationship with your teammates. So whenever you go out on the pitch, you don't want to let them down as well. Mm. And you know that how much it means to the city, how much it means to, to the fans as well. But ultimately, when you go out on the pitch, you, you've got a job to do that the managers ask you. Uh, you know to carry out and it's amongst you and the players as to how that happens and I think winning does does kind of turn into a habit and this this side at the moment certainly up here at home park have, have turned that winning into a habit across this year and that's been you know probably the fundamental underpinning thing in the fact that we're, we're in the position we are 
And I mean, it's been exciting every game here at Home Park, no matter the result. But we mentioned earlier that 92 points last season would have been enough to win the league. And we've actually got more points at the moment than your promotion side had back in 04. I mean, yeah. that's it. how much is that going to weigh on the play? Is that a positive thing, thinking, oh, my word, we're so good at this? Or is it more of a, oh, we've done all this effort and we still aren't over the line? Look, I think it's important to be proud of, some, of what you've done, but mm. I don't think this group are going to be satisfied unless they get promotion. Sure. You know, so whether it's a record points haul or not, it, everything's relative in promotion, and the fact there are still te three teams in the push for two places just means that the, the job isn't done yet. And, uh, and again, we talked quite a bit over the last few weeks about you know the messages that come out of the dressing room, the way that the manager speaks when he's when he's obviously um, you know in press conferences. He is stressing the fact that the next thing they can focus on is the next game, and that's the stuff they can control. Number of points that other teams get to a certain degree is out of our control. So let's worry about the things that that we can influence. And I think that's probably the message he's been you know uh, reiterating with his players. And was that the same kind of mentality that you had when you did get promoted in your side? That look, let's just focus on our own selves. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the, the language was the same in terms of focusing on the process, but there was this, you know, we all knew had clear jobs. Mm. We had, there were clear expectations from the manager. Predominantly, it was, it was Paul Sturrock across the, you know, most of that season. Um, so when we went out, we, we knew what was expected of us. And again, there was rotation, um, you know, in terms of the squad and the, the starting 11 right across that year. But again, when players came in, they, they took on that responsibility. We were all together. I think we, we cared about each other. We had a good relationship as a group in the dressing room. And I think that shows in the way that you react out on the pitch. Well, we've mentioned how Steven Schumacher was celebrated for his League One manager of the season, but that wasn't the only awards picked up. Oh, no, 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 no. Barley Mumba was also celebrated as the Young Player of the Year alongside Michael Cooper, who was named in the Team of the Year side as well. Obviously a good night um, for me and for the rest of us, you know, Coops and the gaffer. You know, it was good, you know, that all of us managed to leave with something. Uh, you know, I was buzzing with them too, you know, having to, uh, you know, the gaffer getting his award and obviously Coops being in Team of the Year. So, you know, it was a good night. The fact that, you know, we all got something and we all brought back something. Home. Hugely proud. I think I was just delighted in the first place to be nominated. I thought it was um, a good achievement to be recognised alongside two other brilliant managers in the division who in Kieran and Darren who manage obviously huge clubs so just to get the nomination was excellent. We were gonna to go to the awards night anyway and and enjoy it because my first full season as a manager and thought let's let's make a night of it. The others obviously Michael and Barley were going to be involved, the community trust mm -hmm. were involved so we felt it was going to be a great night. Let's go and enjoy a Sunday night and then to win the awards was was amazing, yeah. Re really pleased and, and obviously I take the award and I take the accolade, but I accept it on behalf of everyone because it's not just me that works really hard. Me, um, all of the coaching staff, Yuzi and Nance, every single day on it, relentless. Um, the analysts, Sam and Harry, you know the work that they do behind the scenes is outstanding. The medical and performance team at Elliot and Gareth and, and Alex, is, it, it's a whole team contribution. So I said that last night in text message to them all. Yeah, that one's special. Um, obviously, I appreciate it. I'm lucky, you know, I'm very happy to, to get Team of the Year, but I think the Young Player of the Year, I think that's that's the biggest one for me. Um, I feel like that's a statement and, you know, it means a lot. Um, it's one of them seasons for me where it was personal. Um, I've said that from the start, it was a personal season for me and, you know, to finally not know that, you know, I'm, I'm close from, you know, finishing it and doing well, you know, this award is just, you know, one, one bit of the, the sort of joy that's that's hopefully it's going to come this season. So, yeah, uh, it's a special one. I'm just very, you know, buzzing, buzzing to receive it. Yeah. They're finally, you know, recognising the work that, you know, the team's putting in, what we've done this season. So, you know, it's good to see the gaffer getting recognised on his award and Coos being recognised as well, even though, you know, sadly he was out through injury. But it's nice to see, you know, that, the, that spell that he was playing, you know, the work that he put in and the performances that he put in, you know, he's recognised for them. So, yeah, it's nice. Ultimately, it comes down to the players. The players have got to go out there and perform. Every single week, it's all well and good having good staff and whatever, but it's the players that go out there and, and produce and can't thank them enough. They've all said congratulations today, but to me, but without them, then we don't get recognised. So thank you to them as well, yeah.
Well, Ian, it's all well and good winning all the awards, but I think it's just a higher recognition of everything that's happening here at the side at the moment. It is. I think the, the club as a whole has made, made big progress over the last couple of seasons and the fact that um, they've been able to put the team on the pitch in a position to have players and, and the manager, as you say, challenging for those sorts of awards and winning them is, is absolutely fantastic. And I mean, he's battled the likes of Kieran McKenna, Darren Moore, and this is still Shuey's first season. I mean, incredible to win that award. It is, and, and I think that it kind of bears out the fact that whilst, whilst he was assistant to Ryan Lowe when he was here, quite a lot of kind of noise around the time as to what would, what would happen with that changeover. You know, clearly the club and the, and the decision makers in terms of deciding to give him the job have been vindicated in, in what they've seen. And in lots of ways, perhaps it shows, you know, how much of a contribution he was already making, even though he wasn't the manager at that stage. And obviously the progression that he's made and the team have made since then has, has been absolutely incredible. And you mentioned the decision makers at the club alongside Shuey making some incredible signings this season that have really all made an impact. Yeah, and that's, and that's vital because when you've got a group of players together that have the potential to achieve something, which I think, you know, has, has, has been shown before this season, you know, when you, when you add players to it, it has to be done carefully. You can't just bring players in. They, you have to have an understanding of what they bring to the group, not just as a, as a footballer, but as a character as well. And I think that's something that they've clearly got right um, with the players they've added at the start of the season and in, and in January as well. And that's, that's obviously shown in the, in the productive results we've had. And I mean, how highly do you rate Shuey as the person making these decisions, bringing these signings in, but also putting the tactics together as well? Yeah, I mean, I think I think he'd probably be the first to recognise that it's a team effort. So although he's the he's the figurehead, he's the manager. There's lots of people that contribute to that. So the coaching staff, you know, the scouting department and the match analysts, sports science, all of that builds builds together, you know, as well as the players to to create the success that I think we're seeing. So clearly, he's he's the one that it has arguably the biggest influence over that as a manager. And I, I still vividly remember when he was first appointed, I think one of his first interviews on Sky, I've got a feeling we were aware of MK Dons. I just remember his, him smiling and just looking like he was, felt really lucky to be given the opportunity and was really privileged to take on the, you know, the honour of, of managing Argyle. And the way that he's treated the role since then has, 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 I think, really shown that and repaid the faith that's been shown in him. And even when it has been a negative result, he always looks like he's enjoying himself on the touchline. <laughs> yeah, I think the... It, it, he shows that he cares certainly and mm. I think maybe in, in the results we've seen at times um, you know he does let that show and, and that's that's right you know he's the football managers are humans after all and you know they have emotions they're impacted by this and it's it's again it's clear to everyone that that, that, that can see him and in the way that he approaches his role that he cares immensely about the club and about the job that he's that he's got to do and, and a job that I think he's he, he says he's not quite finished yet. Well, let's mention one player in particular who was assigning this season who's been incredible. Six goals, ten assists. Barley Mumba has just been a different bit of gravy. Yeah, he's, he's been really exciting. I think, um, you know, something different in terms of the type of player that we've perhaps had and the fact that he's come in on loan and into a group that he's not been part of before and across the season, again, to have the, the level of influence that he has has, has been fantastic. Well, of course, he was the young player of the season, and let's see exactly why he was. The screen is now Barley Mumba being up. Out of the side. Yeah, he does give something extra, I think, as a, as a wing back. His creativity, you know, his pace, his willingness to run at the opposition, and really that creativity which we saw on Saturday, I think, is a is a vital part of of the, of the side. And you know, often when you when you take players on loan, it's quite difficult to know how they're going to fit in and how they're going to handle playing at the level that they, that they that they come to. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And I think Argyle certainly have. have done their homework and they've, they've, the players they've had in on loan largely this season have been really positive influences, you know, in terms of performance on the pitch, but they've also integrated in the group and really become part of the club as well. Well, we can certainly see more of hopefully our successes tonight against Bristol Rovers live here on Argyle TV. If you haven't got your match pass left and God knows why someone hadn't had it yet, here's the details of how you can be tuning in.
So if you are just joining us, welcome to Argyle TV. Myself, David Waldridge, joined alongside me by Ian Stonebridge. Let's have a quick look at that starting 11 once again. Three changes in the side this evening. Callum Burton in goal, Macaulay Gillespie, uh, James Wilson, Dan Scar, uh, Matt Butcher, Joe Edwards, Danny Mayer, Niall Ennis, Barley Mumba, Adam Randell and Callum Wright on the bench. Adam Parks, Jordan Houghton, Ryan Hardy heads to the bench after that win against Cambridge as well. Sam Cosgrove, Finn Adaz, Niall Lodrick and Jay Matete. Now we look for that side in, you mentioned earlier, it seems like we change every week but it seems to be working. Yeah, as we say, three changes from Saturday, which again, we've, we've, we've seen more changes than that in, the, in previous games in the season. So it's not unusual. Um, I thought there were some fantastic performances right across the team on, on Saturday. So you can understand perhaps why it's fewer changes than maybe we're used to. Um, but to see, you know, James Wilson, Matt Butcher, Niall Ennis come back into the starting 11, you know, those are three players that experienced in the context of Argyle's team this season and certainly bring a lot. Um, but I don't necessarily think that, that the players that are dropping out deserve that it's obviously those decisions that the manager has to make um, and there might be lots of things that kind of feed into that at this stage but I think it's an exciting lineup really looking forward to seeing you know particularly Callum Wright and, and Danny Mayer in behind Niall Ennis and, and see what they can create for us tonight. And it's great that we're speaking so positively so excited about this but of course when every match comes it's opponent let's have a look at that Bristol Rovers side for you this evening as well in goal James Belshaw, uh, Lewis Gordon, Jarrell Quansar, Grant Ward, John Marquez, uh, Aaron Collins, Lewis Gibson, uh, Anthony Evans, Lamar Bongard, uh, Luca Hall, Joss Coburn, and on the bench for them, Jed Ward, James Connolly, Sam Finley, Scott Sinclair, Ryan Loft, Harry Anderson, and James Gibbons. I think, as you said earlier, the one man to watch out for, Aaron Collins, just one of the many in that Rover side that can be very dangerous for us. Yeah, it's, it's no small feat to win player of the season in any division of, uh, for him to do it at Bristol Rovers no disrespect to Bristol Rovers at all but in the context of the, of the league this season you know they've, they've obviously um, not necessarily had a successful season as a team but as an individual he's been fantastic and he's he's a real live wire I'm going to need to watch out for tonight and we know how Joey Barton sets his teams up then it's not going to be pretty at all but it's we're going to be made to work for it tonight yeah like I said earlier I, you know certainly see this as a as a local derby of sorts in terms of the southwest so I think it will be competitive there'll be a great atmosphere in the ground you know it's filling up already there's Everyone's really excited, I think, and positive about the prospects of, of tonight's game. And fingers crossed we can see Argyle with a positive result. So we've mentioned the players individually. Where are those key battles for you going to be tonight, Ian? Yeah, I think Argyle being at home, the onus is on them to go and create something in an attacking sense. So certainly Callum Wright and Danny Mayer, who were, I thought, really influential in Saturday's game. They should take great confidence from that. And hopefully we can see them take that into the, into the performance. Equally, Adam Randall did brilliantly on, on his return to the start in 11 on Saturday. So I think seeing his range of passing and how that can influence us positively in an attacking sense I think we'll, we'll see some more of that tonight I hope so of course we want you to get involved with the conversation as well at Argyle hashtag PAFC a big hello to all of those in the conversation already including Ruth Hall uh, hashtag her game too of course we heard from Emma Potter earlier on this evening a massive thank you to you for getting involved as well uh, Megan Stone as well joining us part of that Her Game 2 initiative doing some brilliant donations outside Home Park this evening as well uh, Matty H uh, thanks for joining us on Twitter as well very much appreciated sir also MJ12 Green Army come on boys let's get the job done tonight and it could be a very big part of what is needed tonight to help us towards that promotion charge as well and uh, hopefully a Saturday to double up with the two wins there as well. Uh, Evan joining us here at Home Park as well. A massive thank you to you. Uh, Ricky Raccoon is here as well. A massive thank you to you for joining us here at Home Park. Of course, you can watch live here on Argyle TV as well. Rob Roberts, he's very much enjoying, enjoying that starting lineup that we have mentioned this evening. And of course, we have the fixtures coming through 
as well this evening as well. They are on your screen now. Uh, some big ones there uh, this evening as well, including uh, one to definitely watch out for that I think we're all going to be keeping our eye on is Ipswich against Barnsley. Ian, that is going to be a big game between those two. That's, that could really affect what's going to happen here. Yeah, it's huge. You know, we talked about Argyle trying to control and influence the things they can influence. If we do that and there's something that goes for us in one of those other games, particularly that Barnsley-Ipswich tie tonight, that, that could see us you know, in, a, in an even stronger position. Yeah, and of course we've got uh, Bolton, Accrington Stanley, Lincoln City, Burton Albion, Oxford United, Cheltenham Town and of course here at Home Park as well. I mean, it's a big game tonight, isn't it? I mean, there's no sugarcoat in this. We need three points. It's a brilliant opportunity, you know, being at home where our form's been so good across this season. You know, Argyle will definitely be looking to get three points. When you looked at the run-in in terms of the, who we're playing, you know, it's attractive in terms of where these teams are in the league. So, again, the, the pressure is on Argyle, but this team has shown themselves to be capable of dealing with that. Well, Ian will be back at halftime. You can hear the atmosphere building here at Home Park, and you can be part of it with us here on Argyle TV. Go and get your match pass now. You're not going to want to miss this one. £10 over at PAFC. All the details you need are there and on the way. Expert commentary brought to you by Charlie Price and Mark Etworthy. <laughs> 